All right, everything should be good here. Mic check. Just going to get everything set up. All right. Welcome back to CS196. Thank you, Eugene. I got a much needed haircut over the break. And so this is going to be my final lecture of the semester. Uh, we'll go into some announcements, some various announcements before we head into the lecture. So first things first, we're coming up on the end of the semester. So there's a lot of various things that we need to just make sure you guys are aware of before we continue. So we are officially done with all of the content that we wanted to teach you guys this semester. So that's various things in Python, various things in Rust, and the professional development lectures that we had. Um, but we do have some extra time. There's a, there's a lecture today, um, there's lecture time on Thursday, and there's a another lecture before reading day on Tuesday. However, we are going to be canceling the lecture on Thursday. We're going to reduce lecture time at this point because we want to give you guys as much time as possible to work on your projects. So this Tuesday will be my lecture, and next Tuesday will be Rohan's lecture. And so what does that mean? Well, it's about time that you guys start wrapping up your projects. They will be due on reading day, and there will be more information about them very soon on how we want you guys to make your final submissions. Uh, another thing, we are done with homework. We will not be releasing any more homework assignments. So uh, this is probably great news to a lot of you. Uh, we will not be releasing any more homework. However, we will be having various extra credit opportunities uh, you know, to kind of seal off the semester. So very important, we are going to be having our final feedback form. We had one very early in the semester just for like very early feedback. But now uh, we want to basically get all the feedback that we can. Uh, me and Rohan won't be teaching the course beyond this point, but the next instructors will be curious to see what worked and what didn't. And we'll be curious to see how we did. Uh, we're really looking forward to this. We're gonna offer a very large amount of extra credit for this because we wanna hear you guys, uh, what you guys have to say. And also make sure that you fill out the ISIS forms as well, the I-C-E-S forms that are online. Uh, you guys probably got an email notification about it already. Make sure you guys fill those out. We actually won't be able to see the results of that for a little bit. That's why we're gonna first release a Google form. Uh, but the ISIS forms are for the department and they'll be able to see kind of how we're doing in the course in case they're, they're curious. And uh, that's like the one through the university. But we'll have our own feedback form on Google Forms. And then we have a couple extra credit problems that we're gonna release. Uh, we are going to have one problem that uh, has Rust concurrency. And we'll be releasing that through PerryLearn, as well as some Python extra credit problems that are going to be related to the topics that me and Rohan are going to cover in our final lectures. So just remember, you guys are capped at 10% of extra credit. Uh, we're going to be putting all of the extra credit into the gradebook as soon as we can, so you guys can know where you're at. But just be aware that that 10% extra credit in this course is capped. So like, if you're doing a bunch of extra credit and you're you know, at like 13%, you will only receive 10% extra credit, which is still a lot of extra credit. So various housekeeping things that we had to get out of the way. If you guys have any questions, let me know. But uh, that's what that's what the announcements are. So objectives for today, what will be what will we be teaching today and on next Tuesday, since we're kind of done with the content? Well, we're going to be spending this extra time going through th some things that we think is going to be useful for you guys. So uh, what's probably most useful for the most of you, aside from all the useful things that we've already taught you this semester, are probably some things that are useful for coding interviews that aren't exactly taught in CS225 or CS374. Um, so today, that's going to be the sliding window pattern. Uh, the sliding window pattern covers a lot of these coding problems, uh, these coding interview problems, and I think it'll be very useful to learn about. Uh, when I was preparing for my coding interviews, I was... Uh, you know, very happy to learn like a pattern that I could replicate pretty easily because that'll knock out a lot of the problems that like, you know, you don't have to think too much about. Um, and then Rohan will cover the two pointers pattern on Tuesday. These two patterns uh, cover a good amount of coding interview problems. Of course, there's many more and you'll need the concepts from 225 and 374 for basically everything else. But uh, these two should be very useful to those of you who are trying to interview for internships or eventually full-time software engineering positions, etc. So, uh, just a general statement. Uh, if you guys are curious about, like, kind of 
the general necessity to succeed in these co coding interviews, uh, my general advice is just make sure that you have a strong hold over the fundamentals. So that's just data structures and algorithms. Almost all of your coding interview questions are going to be data structures and algorithms. And then just make sure there, you, you understand the various algorithmic patterns that also come with these coding interview problems. So we'll cover two of these, so the two pointers and sliding window pattern. Uh, but there's you know, a few that you'll kind of pick up on as you do more practice. And so uh, that's why I say this final part here, do leak code problems consistently. There's a website called Leak Code. Um, make sure you have a stronghold over fundamentals and the patterns, and then do these problems consistently. And over time, you will become much better at solving these problems. So today, we're going to talk about the sliding window pattern. Uh, but before we talk about the sliding window pattern, we're, gonna, we're going to need to motivate it a bit. Why do we want to use this, this technique, this algorithm? Um, so let's go to the iPad. Uh, today is going to be more of an iPad lecture because there's going to be a lot of visualization, moving things around. Uh, let's begin with this problem. So let's say you get a problem that asks you to get the maximum sum of a subarray of size k. And what that means is, um, here's an example. So in this example here, we have a list with you know, 2, 3, 4, uh, 2, and 7. And we want to find a subarray. So a subarray could be um, this, it could be this, etc., where the sum or rather where the size is of the input that we're given. So in this case, we want to find something of size 2, a subarray of size 2. So the answer to this problem is going to be, to this example rather, is going to be 9. Why is that? Well, uh, the largest sum that we can create is this final subarray right here, 2 plus 7, which gives us 9. Uh, all the other subarrays, this one will only give us 5, this one will give us 6. So, of course, the final subarray will be the one with the largest sum. Uh, if you want another example of this, if I have k equals 4 and this different array, the, the, the subarray that will give us the largest sum will be this subarray right here. Because if you do the math, that will give us 42, and there are no other subarrays that will provide us a sum larger than 42. So that's just the general problem statement, statement, but now we can talk about how we can actually solve this problem. So with these coding interview problems, typically you want to begin by talking about a brute force approach. Uh, someone asked, does 37 not count as a subarray? No. Uh, very, very good question. When we talk about subarrays in this question, we're talking about contiguous subarrays. So arrays, so there, there can't be any breaks in the subarray. Good question. We're going to be talking about contiguous subarrays. So first things first, typically when you're trying to solve these coding interview problems, you're going to want to try and come up with a brute force approach, something that is just super straightforward, um, not very efficient, but it solves the problem. So what is our brute force approach? Well, we're going to want to look at all of the windows of size k and see if the sum of that window is greater than you know, some sort of running total or running maximum, and we can just keep updating that every single time. So we would just basically look at this subarray right here, and we would, we would sum up all of the elements of it. We would see, is it greater than some running sum? And just keep going until we find the subarray that has the largest sum. And eventually we would find that it is this one. It's the same example as earlier. Um, so very brute force approach. It'll get the job done. And let's talk about the time complexity here. So the time complexity will be O of n times k, where n is the size of the array, and k is that you know size of the window that is input into the function, right? And the reason why that is is because we'll be looping through. And then for every single time that we loop through, we're going to loop an extra k times to find the rest of that window, right? So we would have, we would start here, and then we'd loop an extra k times. We would start here, loop an extra k times, et cetera. So that's why it's O of n times k. So this will get the job done. This will get you an answer. Uh, but can we do better? And before we talk about doing better, we can actually look at the brute force code. 
So this is what the brute force code looks like. And I think the time complexity will be a little bit easier to understand once we look at the code. So we have this function called maximum subarray of size k, where we take in an array, and uh, k being the size of the subarray that we're looking for, as we said earlier. And we're going to want to keep track of a few running totals. We're going to see uh, the sum of our current window, the current window that we're evaluating, and the sum of, so this will be our current window sum, and max sum will be what we're returning. This is going to be keeping track of the best that we could do in the entire array. So we're going to basically just loop through from zero all the way until the length of the array minus k plus one. And the reason why we do that is because if you notice here, we don't actually need to go all the way to the end of the array. We just need to stop once the length of the array minus k uh, plus one so you'll see here, we just need to loop until this point because we can evaluate the rest of that window without actually going further, if that makes sense. Then we can take a look at the current window sum by, from that point, iterating k more times and just incrementing the window sum and then saying that the max sum of the entire array is going to be equal to what we've already evaluated versus our current window sum. And over time, we're going to end up getting the max sum, which is our answer. And so, as we said before, this will get us our answer. This is exactly what we looked at in our iPad overview, and it's fine, right? But the issue comes with the time complexity. Time complexity of O of n times k means that if we were to have an array that is really large, or a k that is really large, we're talking like hundreds of thousands of elements, this algorithm will be extremely slow, and we can do much better. And why is it that we can do better? Well, we're going to have to look at this right here. Uh, someone says, can't you just subtract the first value and add the value of the next value in the array? Hold your horses. Hold, hold your horses, Ben. We're getting there. Uh, so why is it that this is such an inefficient solution? The reason why this is an inefficient solution is because if you notice here, we have a lot of overlaps in what we're calculating here. We're calculating the same thing many times, if you notice that right here. And so if we look back at the slides, how can we actually avoid the problem of these redundant calculations, where we're calcula recalculating the window every single time? Um, well, this is where the sliding window pattern comes into play. So let's go back to the iPad. So how do we, how do we implement the sliding window pattern? Well, the sliding window pattern is just basically saying, why would we keep on recalculating every single window over and over again when we can maintain one window like so. So here is our window of some sorts, right? And it's the same thing. In this case, it's a, a k is equal to 2. So our window is going to be of size 2. And what we can do is just basically iterate through this array with our window and just say, OK, in this case, our current window sum is 5. So the best so far is going to be 5. We can keep track of that here, I guess. And then we'll continue iterating. We'll say, all right, here's a new uh, window. 3 and 4. 3 plus, floor, 3 plus 4 is going to be 7. That's better than 5. So we update that. Let's continue iterating. And we'll keep on doing this until eventually we hit the end here, where we say, OK, 9 is actually the best. And we'll return 9. So you'll notice the difference between what we saw earlier, where we're constantly reevaluating the same exact overlapping material rather than just sliding and updating our window each time. So what does this mean? When we slide the window, we're going to want to keep track of our maximum value and the current window sum to see if we can do better than the maximum value. And this will give us O of n time complexity because we're not doing that constant recalculation. We're just doing one pass through the array. So n is the size of the array, and we are going to get our answer at the end. So how do we actually implement this? Let's take a look. So just a quick thing to note, 
this is going to be kind of like the general code pattern for a, a, a sliding window problem of fixed size. Notice that in the problem statement it said uh, subarrays of size k. That means that the window size will always be of size k. So it's a fixed size. So let's take a look at the code here. So we've defined the same exact function. And what we can do here is same idea as before. We're going to keep track of our maximum sum and the sum of our current window. And we're going to basically every single time just see, OK, can we do better than the max with our current window sum? And we keep on doing that over and over again until eventually we get our answer. So we can define two variables, window start and window end, to define the bounds of our sliding window. So what does that mean? Well, we can have, I can just erase this here. So our window start and our window end is basically going to be start and end. And we're going to move these pointers across as we go through our example. So the general coding pattern for this is that we will have a for loop with our window end. We are going to want to keep on pushing our window end every single time. And the way that we can maintain our window is by keeping it in this window sum variable. So first, we're going to want to build our, our sliding window. And what that means is window end is going to start at the beginning here. Just like, just like so. So window end is going to start at the beginning, just like window start. And window end is going to keep on iterating until we've reached k. And so every single time it iterates, it's going to build the initial window of size 2. It's going to be adding those variables into this window sum, uh, th those values into this window sum variable. So in this case, It'll just keep adding 2, 3, and then it'll stop. And then on our next iteration, we're going to check, is our window end, is the right side of our window greater than or equal to k minus 1? Basically meaning, have we hit the size of our window? If we have, then we're going to want to check, is our current window sum better than the max sum that we're keeping track of? And if it is, we're going to update that. That's how this max uh, will work, right? And then we're going to want to decrement the left side, decrement from the left side of our window. And the reason why that is is because in this variable where we're keeping track of the state of our window, if we're going to bring in window start on our next iteration, like so, then we don't want this value 2 anymore because it's not in our window. And so that's exactly why we're saying window sum minus equal array of window start. And then we do window start plus equals 1, basically saying let's bring in the left side. So they kind of move together. And then, and then at the end, we're going to return max sum because that will be our answer. And so we can run this. We have two examples here. These are the examples that I went over in the uh, on the iPad. Um, and you'll see that they match. So if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. But I think that this should fairly make sense. We have a variable that's maintaining the state of our window. And we're going to update our window start and window end as we continue, making sure that we delete variables, delete values from our variable as we go through. And this is better because, again, we're not recalculating the entire window. Rather, we'll just be shifting these values by one every single time, and so we save a lot of computational time. So let's continue. So an important thing to note is that these sliding window problem titles, like the names of these problems, are typically going to be pretty obvious when you're going to want to use a sliding window. And the reason why that is is because, if you notice here, I went onto to LeetCode and I copied and pasted a bunch of problems that I knew use sliding window. And so here, uh, I bolded and underlined two things. So if you look through, we'll see continuous subarray, substring, subsequences, substring, subarrays, consecutive, substring. And then on the right side, we'll have various constraints that we want to have within our window. 
So, you know, absolute difference being uh, less than or equal to the limit. At least k repeating characters that satisfy the given sum condition without repeating characters, etc. So typically we have some sort of hint that, hey, we're going to have a contiguous subarray, subsequence, consecutive something, whatever it is. And within that, sub, within that sliding window, we're going to have some sort of constraint. And so this is, should kind of tip you off to know that, OK, we're going to be using sliding window for this problem. So that was the fixed size sliding window, where we're literally just sliding a window across the array, updating value every single time. But uh, if you notice, this isn't always going to be the case. And we can see why that is once we go to this next example. So let's say we have a problem that says, let me find the smallest subarray with a given sum. And so let's give some examples so you guys know what I'm talking about here. So in this array, we'll know that the answer is 1 because the smallest subarray that gives us a value uh, greater than or equal to our sum is just going to be this subarray here. Because the sum that we're looking for is 7, and there is nothing smaller than that, right? Um, so on our next example, maybe a little bit less trivial, uh, we want to find the same thing, smallest subarray that is giving us a sum greater than or equal to uh, what we have here. So here we'll see that the answer is 5 and 2 because while there are some other examples that will give us 7, for example, this subarray here, we know that that's not the answer because it's not the smallest subarray. This would be a subarray of size 3, whereas this subarray here is of size 2. And that's why that's the answer. So again, we talked about this in the slides. We, we know that we want to use sliding window because of you know, various things that will tip us off here. Really. Smallest subarray. So we know that this is you know, falling into the pattern that we were talking about. But if you notice, this window is not of a guaranteed uh, fixed size. And the reason why that is, is just from the examples that we gave alone, here's an answer where the subarray is of size 1. Here's an example where the subarray is of size 2. So we know right away this is not of a fixed size. This is going to be a different type of sliding window. This is going to be a dynamically changing size. So what do I mean by that? Well, we're going to maintain a dynamic sliding window, where instead of just shifting over a sliding window of the same exact size, we're going to want to grow and shrink the window based on various constraints. So in this case, we're going to want to grow our sliding window until the constraint is reached, and then we're only going to want to shrink it, so that means bring in the left side. So grow means expand the right, shrink means cut, bring in the left. And we're only going to want to grow it until our constraint is reached, and then shrink it when we're trying to do better. So what does that mean? Well, it's best with an example. So let's look at this example here. Uh, we can begin our sliding window by just saying, you know, a, sli a sliding window of size 1. And we're going to keep on expanding until our constraint is reached. So we said we want to find a window where the sum of it is greater than or equal to the sum that we're looking for, which is in this case 7. So we said keep expanding until the constraint is reached. So this window has a sum of size 2. Is 2 greater than or equal to 7? No. So let's keep on expanding. And we'll keep on expanding until eventually we do reach the constraint. In this case, the sum of our window is 8. That is greater than or equal to 7. So now we're going to say that the best so far is 3, because that's the size of that window. And now we're going to see if we can do better. And what I mean by that is, we're going to want to bring in the left side. So now let's bring in the left, the window start pointer. So we'll bring that in. And now in our current window, we're going to check, OK, are we reaching the constraint? No, we're not. We only have 1 and 5, which is 6, not greater than or equal to 7. So let's keep on trying to reach the constraint again. So we expand our right side. We grow until the constraint is reached. So now here we have, again, the same exact thing. Window sum of size, uh, window sum of eight, which which satisfies the constraint, but we already have something of size three, so it's not going to change anything. But now let's see if we can do better. So let's bring in the left side, and we'll see right away we actually can do better. Um, the sum of this window is seven, which will update our best, 
and we can continue iterating. We're going to see, can we do better? Let's see. Well, does 2, is 2 greater than or equal to 7? No. So let's continue expanding, growing until the constraint is reached. 5 does not satisfy the constraint. And then 7 does, but this is size 3, and the best is actually size 2. So this is what we will be returning. And that is our answer. So notice how we kind of expanded Notice how we kind of expanded and shrunk our sliding window according to the constraint. In this case, the constraint was the sum according to the problem. And so the time complexity for this, you can imagine what the time complexity would be if we tried to do this through brute force, where we like generated all of the different subarrays or something. Uh, the, the time complexity of this will be O of n plus n, which is uh, this symbol here means asymptotically equivalent to O of n. So. And I think that'll be a little bit more clear once we see the code. So let's see the code. So here is the general code for a problem that is asking you for like a dynamic, dynamically updating size sliding window. So we have a function that, that takes in a, um, an array and the sum, the target sum that we're looking for. And similar idea to what we saw before. We're going to maintain a variable that we'll have the current state of our window, so our current window sum, and then we're going to have a value that we're trying to maximize or minimize. In this case, we're trying to minimize it, so we'll initialize it to the largest possible value that Python can create. So you do that by saying float of infinity. And so basically, we're doing this because you know we don't know exactly what to initialize it to, so we just choose this, right? So we initialize our window start, to zero. And similar similar idea to what we saw before, we'll have our window end go all the way until the end of the array. And every single time we're going to add into our window sum because we want to build our window. And then we're going to check, is our window sum greater than or equal to the sum that we're looking for? And this right here is our constraint. So this is where we check, okay, should we shrink, should we bring in the left side? Because we said we want to grow, this is, uh, this is us growing until the constraint is reached. And then here we're saying, okay, we've reached the constraint, so now we want to actually see if we can do better. And we'll bring in the left side. So we've reached the constraint if we enter this while loop, and then we'll say uh, the minimum length, so this is what we're looking for, right? The smallest subarray, so this is what we're trying to minimize. Uh, we minimize it by saying that it's either going to be what we've seen already or the size of our current window. And the way that you will find the size of the current window is by doing window end minus window start plus one. This is always how you calculate the size of your current window. And if that's not clear, you'll see that if this was start and this was end and this was like zero, one, two, so end is on two. Uh, start is on zero. We'll do end minus the start, two minus zero, plus one, which is equal to three. That checks out. That's the size of our current window sum, or uh, our current window size, rather. And so once we do that, we're going to see, okay, can we do better? So how do we do better? We bring in the left side by first taking it out from our variable that's maintaining the state, and then bring in window start because that's how we we increment window start that's how we bring it in and then at the end we get the minimum length because that's the answer so uh, we can run it these are the various examples that we kind of talked about on the ipad and you'll see that it works oh and uh the reason why the time complexity is o of n plus n is because we're never doing what we saw with the double for loop like here we do have a nested for loop but we're not like regenerating the array every single time. Rather, we're just doing one pass through the array, and occasionally within that pass, we're going to do you know n operations to bring in the left side. So we're not we're not doing you know multiple iterations like what we saw with the with the for loop. This will be O of n plus n, and that just simplifies down to O of n. So let's continue. 
And so those were two variants of the sliding window. Now we can talk about basically the final variant of the sliding window uh, you know, type pattern. And that is that sometimes we'll need to use some auxiliary data structures. And so uh, we can go back to the iPad to see exactly what I'm talking about. So a good problem to demonstrate a sliding window that is dynamically changing and also using an auxiliary data structure is uh, finding the longest substring with k distinct characters. So again, if you don't know how to spot a sliding window problem, we know exactly what's going on here. We see substring, we see the constraints. Um, we know, all right, let's use sliding window. So here's an example of what this problem is asking for. We said we want to find the longest substring with k distinct characters. So here is our, here is our total string. And we're looking for a substring where there is only two different types of characters. That is why that is our k value, right? And so in this case, the answer is 4, because our longest substring is of size 4, where there's only two different types of characters. In this case, it's a and r, right? Um, you know, of course, there's other examples of this, like, you know, this is a substring that meets the constraint, but it's not the longest one. This one is, right? So what is our approach? Similar idea. Uh, we're going to want to grow and shrink based on various constraints. In this case, we're not looking for the shortest. Rather, we're looking for the longest. So the properties in which we grow and shrink our sliding window are a bit different, but similar idea. So we're going to want to grow our sliding window until the constraint is reached. And in this case, the constraint is we have um, characters within our sliding window that are greater than, the amount of characters greater than the amount of distinct characters that we're allowed to have within that window. That is our constraint. So we're going to grow until that constraint is reached, and we're going to shrink it when that constraint is violated. So what does that mean? Well, let's look at the same exact example that we looked at uh, before we looked at the approach. So we're going to build up our sliding window. So we'll start off with, you know, window of size one. This is our window end. And we're going to check, okay, um, does this violate the constraint? Well, there's only one type of character within our window, so we're fine. We can continue growing. But remember, we said you can use auxiliary data structures with your sliding window. So how can we actually check if the constraint is being violated or reached? Well, we can use a dictionary. Uh, these things are pretty nifty. And so this is how we'll know if we've reached the constraint. This dictionary will keep track of all of the characters that are currently within our window. So every single time we see a character, we'll go ahead and throw it into the dictionary with a count keeping track of how many times we've seen it. So in this case, we've only seen A once. We'll throw it in there, and we're going to check. OK, are the, numbers of, are the number of characters in our dictionary um, greater than the number that we're allowed to have? Because we're only allowed two distinct uh, characters, or in this case, two, but you know, k distinct characters. So is it greater than k? In this case, no. So we're going to grow until we reach our constraint. So we can grow it. We'll see that we'll have r. We throw r into the dictionary. Um, have we violated the constraint? No. We, had, we don't have more than two in our dictionary. We only have two in our dictionary, two distinct characters. So let's continue growing. Uh, here we see another A, so we can go ahead and update our A. We've seen it two times. And similar idea, keep on growing. We've only seen A three times now. And while we're doing this, obviously we'll keep track of um, the best so far. So in this case, the best so far is going to be four, right? Our current, our current window size. So let's keep on trying to grow it. We still haven't reached our constraint. We're still good. So now we'll hit C. We'll throw C into the dictionary. And we'll say we've seen it once. And now we'll check. OK, how many characters do we have in our dictionary? We have three. Three is greater than our k for this problem, which is two. So we need to shrink. We need to bring in the left side. So someone said, can we use a set instead of a dictionary? No, and the reason why is actually what I'm about to show you right now. So again, 
we want to shrink once we violated the constraint. We violated the constraint now because there are three things in our dictionary. We're only allowed two distinct characters. So when I bring in the left side, when I try to shrink our window, I'm going to delete A from it, right? I'm going to bring in window start, and I'm going to decrement how many instances of A there are within my window. So I'll decrement three down to two. Now, if you imagine that we have a set rather than a dictionary, um, I would have to remove it from the set entirely. So what that would mean is I just delete it just like that. But there are still A's within my window. So I need to actually make sure it's a dictionary rather than a set because of the reason being, uh, because there might be more than one uh, like instance of a character within a window. So good question. Um, back to the example. So we shrink until when the constraint is violated and we grow until the constraint is reached. We are still violating the constraints here. If you notice, there are still three. So we need to keep on shrinking. We'll bring in the left here. And now we'll remove R from our dictionary. And so now in our current window, we can actually grow it because there are only two. So we'll grow it. We'll put I in there. And this is a problem, right? We have three again. We'll keep on shrinking. So that'll be updated to one. We'll keep on shrinking. So this will be deleted. And now we can't grow any further because we're at the end of the array. And so we know that our answer will be four, which was that original window that we saw at the start. So this is an example of a dynamically sliding window, just like we saw in the last problem, but we're using an auxiliary data structure because we need to keep track of some information. So here's the general code for that kind of problem. So if you notice right away, the structure of this problem is very similar to what we saw before, right? We have this for window end, and we have within that the while loop with the constraint that we're looking for. But in this case, we're just overlaying this auxiliary data structure. So in this case, we have this char frequency dictionary. So same idea. We're going to keep pushing window end. And this little bit right here is essentially building our initial character frequency uh, dictionary. And then once we hit the constraint, which our constraint is the length of our character frequency is greater than k, aka we have too many characters. We have too many characters inside of our dictionary. And k being, of course, the amount that we're allowed, right? We've reached our constraint. So now, if we reach our constraint, what did we say? We want to shrink our window. So the way that we shrink our window is by bringing in the left character. And this right here is just basically saying, I'll decrement the one right off the end there. And if it's 0, I want to actually delete it from the dictionary entirely. Because if we didn't delete it, it would just have, you know, I've, I've seen a zero times. And when we calculate the length of character frequency, it would be inaccurate. So we want to actually delete it from the dictionary entirely if that count goes down to zero. And then the way we shrink the window is by bringing in window start. And then every single time we do this, of course, we're going to want to keep track of the maximum length. So we do that by saying maximum length is equal to what we've seen, maximum length, and our current window size, which we said is window end minus window start plus one. And I showed you why that works earlier. So if I run this, uh, these are correct answers, <laughs> I promise. You can run it on your own if you want. Uh, but yeah, if anyone has any questions about this, let me know. Uh, but very similar boilerplate to what we saw with the other dynamic sliding window. It's just in this case, we're overlaying that data structure over it. And so the time complexity of this is going to be same thing. O of n plus n, which is asymptotically equivalent to O of n. So linear time, very good. Um, and also, you have to remember that the dictionary, the hash table that we're using to store the character counts, is going to be O of 1 lookups. So that doesn't change this time complexity. Um, just various things that you'd want to point out to your interviewer if you had this problem, basically. OK. Very, very difficult Kahoot question coming at your way. I'm shipping it out to you. I'm about to blow your minds. Join in with your net ID as always.
the hoot music has changed a bit. This is, uh... Christmas? Nice job, Hoot. Good stuff. Like one more minute for you guys to join. guys can do it. They're almost there. Almost there. I will be starting in like 20 seconds. Alright, we're slowing down on I'll start it up. Very, very difficult to do question coming right at you. You guys are going to be deep in thought about this. Where are you here? <laughs> Let's see if we have any jokesters in the, uh, in the stream. Ah, five jokesters. I knew it. All right, it doesn't matter if you pick true or false. You'll get credit. Uh, I didn't. <clears throat> I didn't feel like Kahoot questions were a very good addition to this lecture, but I, we wanted to keep track of attendance. Um, that's it for today. That is the sliding window problem. And uh, if you guys are studying for your interviews, I think that it'll be a bit helpful to kind of knock out a whole category of problems. We'll be releasing an extra credit homework. Uh, that will have some sliding window problems for you guys to practice writing out, you know, the various, you know, sliding window patterns uh, that we went through today. And so we said that lecture is canceled on Thursday and Rohan's lecture will be on Tuesday. So that means that this is my final lecture. Uh, my final lecture ever, actually, because me and Rohan are not taking over for future semesters of 196. So... It was a pleasure teaching you guys this semester. I hope that 196 could be like a little bit of light in your times in COVID here. Um, online learning sucks, and we I hope that we tried our best to make it less frustrating and less you know uh, depressing <laughs> as it should be, right? Uh, I had a great time this semester teaching the course, and I had a great time with 196. I've been a part of it since spring of 2019 and uh, been teaching it since the spring. You guys were definitely some of the best group of students that we've had, at least that I've had since being on the staff. You should all be very proud of yourselves and feel free to keep in touch. I'll be around, add me on LinkedIn, uh, reach out on Discord, whatever it is. Have a wonderful rest of your semester and Rohan will be here next Tuesday. <laughs>